Hello peeps and welcome back to the Age Engineering. Last episode, we set up this absolutely stupid Ender Pearl farm. I have it turned off right now. Because this thing draws about a thousand RF a tick when it runs. How stupid is it? That's stupid. I actually haven't even had this thing running for a while. I let it run for like an hour or two and that's what I ended up with. Now what I have let run off camera is my cobblestone generation, so I'm up to a septuple and a bunch of sextuple, so I got tons of cobblestone. I've let my reactors run off camera. And I also made three more nether stars because I had a total of four of the skulls. So, yeah. Tons of that. Uh, mass fabrication is going very well. I actually put in a dynamic tank behind here to hold extra UU matter once I fill up. I am running into power issues because I have something stupidly overclocked upstairs. And I'll show you in a second what that is. This is running perfectly fine. I'm actually building up a stockpile of tiny uranium. I have a new conduit on here with a downgrade to pull out uranium-238 and trash it because I have, I have been stockpiling this stuff and there's so much of it in here that I was actually backlogging on this. This couldn't process anymore because these slots were full. So I have that in there to pull it out. It'll automatically try to eject most of it to this if it needs it. That's going to drive me nuts. Um, but as you can see, I'm not hurting for fuel cells at the moment. If we go back upstairs, take a look over in here, I have automation set up on this thermal centrifuge to centrifuge all of the depleted uranium cells. I'm producing lots of plutonium. I've got 20 so far, and I still have a ton of these things to process. So we're going to let that process. We're going to get to that in a minute. Because this episode, I want to start working on getting a little bit better power for RF. Oh, and this, a thank you for the tip. I, I, I can't remember the name, Sliding Silver or something like that. So why don't you just make like a cobblestone generator instead of having the... Yeah, so that worked. It places the Pahoe lava in here. Bang. Basalt. Bang. Tons of basalt. I've let this idle for about 10 hours today. Just running this and running out uranium cells and yeah, the whole nine yards. So you can see though that my power supply took a little bit of a hit. It's recovering now, but I had that over there turned on and yeah. So, things that I need to do. I need to improve, well, I need to wait for the lag spike, I guess. I need to improve my calculator generation. My generation for these processors, because I don't have anywhere near enough of these things. I'm going to need these things in mass for late game. So I need to work on that. But I'm not going to do that this episode. Um, I also need to get a blaze farm up and running, because I'm going to need a lot of blaze rods. Um might do that next episode. We're not going to do that this episode either. What I want to do this episode so I want to take care of this thing. This diesel generator down here. It has served its purpose, but I think it's about time that this thing go the way of the dodo. Because we can do better. We can do a lot better. And why are you... Tiggy, get out of that. Ay ay ay. Cat's over there rooting in my trash can. Um, yeah, I've got a nice backlog of melons now. The garden closures are holding up just fine. Nice backlog. We're still generating tons of diesel fuel, but we can be a little more efficient with the use on this. We are going to get started on advanced generators. Advanced generators allows you to make multi-blocks that produce either RF or EU, depending on how you set it up, and can run off of diesel. It's more efficient than 
a regular diesel generator. I did a little bit of playtesting with it off camera just to see what the efficiency was and it's much more efficient. So we're going to get started on that. First of all, I'm going to take off my hazmat suit and put this away. I was dealing with the plutonium, so... I had to have this on me. And another quick aside, we're going to take care of one more thing that's been irritating me. This forestry farm over here, it's great. I love it. It has served its purpose, though. I am going to tear this down because I have... Well, it's actually not even running right now. Why is it not running? can't work. No fertilizer. It's got fertilizer. It's right there. Let's figure out where the derp is. Hey, it's not supplying fertilizer. Insert on green. They also extract on green. That's the problem. Extract on brown. Then here. Oh, wait, no. We're extracting on brown here. So, I wonder how long this thing hasn't been running. Extract on green. Insert on brown. Now it's working. Okay, but this thing... This thing has kind of served its purpose. I'm going to change this back to a regular old wood farm. I think. But I'll probably do that later, because I want to wait for it to harvest everything. I don't want to waste up everything that's over there. Okay, so, yeah. Advanced generators. Let's get on that. <coughs> Advanced generators requires a few things to get started. The first thing it requires is you have to have a controller. We are going to be making a gas turbine controller, because we're going to be using gas. This requires redstone iron wiring, control circuits, iron tubing, and iron frames. Iron frames is real easy, it's just iron. So let's get started with this. Uh, we're going to need a bunch of these iron frames, so I'm just going to make a stack of them. I've got tons of iron. We're also going to need a bunch of this iron tubing, so I'm going to make a stack of that. We need a bunch of this redstone iron tubing, we'll make a stack of that. Speaking of which, I should probably check my redstone. 19.6k. Nice. That garden cloche back there is working overtime for me. We're going to need some of these control circuits. These require the refined circuit boards. This is made using three very specific circuits and two pure Certus Quartz crystals. So, this is part of the reason why I'm going to have to get my calculator circuit production going, because... I want to do Applied Energistics soon, and Applied Energistics requires this crap. Okay, so the one that looks like a kanji... I need one of these. Uh, I think I need the blue one of that. I need kind of the greenish one of that. So you. And... Which one is it? Kind of greenish. That one? Let's just make three of the damn things. Okay. Give me you. Pop that in. Uh, I need some redstone ingots. I should have some in here. I need water. So we'll grab a bucket. Put that dirt away. And I need Sardis. Eight of my pure Sardis. We'll go in there. If I did this right, 
I should be getting refined circuit boards. So there's two. And there is three. Good. All right. So to make this control circuit, I need one of those advanced circuit boards. I think the control circuit is only used for the turbine controller. So there is a turbine controller. We're good there. I will need a flux generator. Power I.O., which requires an advanced circuit, a couple pistons, and some conductive iron. Have everything for that. And flux generator gets. I will need a turbine. Uh, wait, flux generator? No, I need the turbines to actually create the flux. Um, I'm going to want a fuel-air mixer, which is this pressure valve, which is really easy. The fuel-air mixer increases the fuel efficiency so that you get more power out of every unit of fuel. So, that gives me the fuel-air mixer, and then there's a step above that, the gas mix compressor which requires a couple of these advanced pressure valves, which is advanced alloy around these. So two of these. So you get two of these. Am I out of advanced alloy? No. I was going to say, don't tell me I'm out of advanced alloy. To get one of you. Gas mix compressor. Um, sensor module? I don't even know what the sensor module does, honestly, so we're not going to worry about that. Uh, the mixing, the heating chamber. I need a fuel tank. Well, actually, I don't even need the fuel tank. Fuel tank is just if you want to store extra fuel in there. Now, I do need the turbines. And this is where it gets expensive. Turbines allow you to actually produce power. There are, uh, let's see, there are three, there are five levels of turbines, I think. There is gold-plated, bronze and steel, which are the same, uh, iron, which is the weakest, then there is vibrant and manulin. The vibrant and manulin pr can produce up to 500 RF a tick each. So, to match the diesel generator, we would need eight of these. They require pellets of RTG fuel. They also require turbine rotors. So these are expensive. First off, we need... I'm going to make 10 turbines total. So we need 10 pellets of RTG. Well, just so happens, I've got plenty of plutonium. I'm going to need a bunch of dense iron plates because the RTG pellets require dense iron plates around the plutonium. So I need a total of 60 dense iron plates. Let's get to crafting. That's going to get me a stack of iron, or a stack of iron blocks, which we'll put through the block cutting machine. We'll take three of the overclockers out of the compressor. Pop those in there. Uh, do I have any more overclockers anywhere? I know I have some in the centrifuge, but I want those to stay there. Because I really need to get this stuff processed. I've been putting this off too long. Uh, before I go messing around with anything nuclear, let's get this stuff back. Like I said, I'm having power issues at the moment. And that's with the nuclear reactor upstairs running. So, <laughs> take that for what you will. Alright. If I'm going to make 10 of these, I need 30 plutonium. Uh, let's put the plutonium in my backpack. That sounds real safe. Pull it back out of the backpack. And 
we'll start compressing iron plates. I'm going to need a lot of these, so I'm just going to go ahead and stock up. Actually, I don't even need the plutonium yet, so I'm going to put the plutonium right there for now. Uh, I'm going to need the turbine rotors. I need 10 of these, which means I need 80 of these. I did make a lot of vibrant off camera. So, I should be able to do that. And I should be able to craft this 10 times. Or 20 times. 16. Oh, shit. 64 plus 16 is 80. And turbine rotor. Get 10 vibrant turbine rotors. The rest of it is just the iron frame, the iron tubing, the redstone wiring, and pellets of RTG. So really, we're just waiting on this. Let's get the plutonium, put it here in the crafting table. Again, this sounds really safe. That gives me pellets of RTG fuel. Toss that in there. Nine, ten. Good. That's regular iron plates. I need the dents. Okay. Toss you in there. Okay, there's four pellets of RTG fuel. With that, we can make four turbines. There we go. Four vibrant turbines. We of course need a lot more than that, but I have to wait for the iron plates to compress, actually. Now that that's done, we can do that. We're going to have to help this, because it can't keep up now. I need a total of 36 plates to finish the plutonium. Thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six. We'll go ahead and let that finish up, because I'm probably going to want to produce more, but we'll just let it keep going. So, we need to make more pellets of RTG fuel to make more turbines. Ten turbines. Let's go tear up that noisy-ass diesel generator. A zombie behind the wall, apparently. Okay, diesel generator. I appreciate you, but your services are no longer required. You have served me well. Alright, now... One thing I want to do here is I want to put in a fuel tank. I'm going to waste a little bit of diesel doing this, but I want to put in a fuel tank that I'm going to embed in the floor. So, I'm going to have to kill you, aren't I? 
Shut up, I'm trying to record here. Means I can tear this down too. Although I'll probably put it back over there to deal with the sound that's making. Uh, I don't need any of that stuff right now. Don't want this, but I'll toss it in there anyway. Why not? Uh, and I don't need any of the parts that I picked up from the diesel generator. I might use this to make a second excavator at some point. I also don't need the extra refined circuit boards right now. Or the iron frames. Uh, what I do need is the dynamic tank blocks that I've made. I also need to make two of these into valves. So, into the floor. I'm going to put a dynamic tank. I'm actually going to make it a little bigger than that. I'm going to make this tank 5x5, five five, I think. Oh, shit. Not at all what I wanted to do. Eh, well, it's going to do it anyway, isn't it? It's fine. I'll put it back together. I fix. And let's put the lumber axe away and get a different axe. There we go. <clears throat> I'll make this 3x3, three three, or 5x5x3. Five by five by three. This will also give me a chance to show you the dynamic tank, how to actually put it together, because I didn't show that originally. A dynamic tank is a multi-block. It has to be some sort of rectangular. Exact dimensions don't matter. But you make it rectangular, you leave a hole in the center. Then put a valve, put another valve. I'll need a few more blocks. When you complete it, you get that red flash that tells you the multi-block was successfully created. Let's put some of this stuff away. And if we take a look at this, the volume is 75. Now, what is the actual volume of this thing? I honestly don't know. I think it's 16 buckets times that. So it holds a lot. In order to get this to connect, I'm going to have to break this and replace it. Then I'll need my Yetta wrench to tell these that they're allowed to connect. And set this to insert. And we are now building up tons of biodiesel in here. We're actually draining the tank. How are we doing on this stuff? I'm actually draining this tank too, so I am finally, finally producing, well I'm actually not draining this tank, am I? Because it's refilling every time it gets down to a certain point. Okay, anyway, let's build the generator. The first thing we're going to need is we're going to need to clean up some of this energy conduit, because I'm not going to need all of this. There we go. I actually just have the one sticking out of there. This thing is a free-form multi-block. You can put it any way you want as long as it's all connected somehow. So, we're going to put the flux gen right there. Just like that. Underneath that, 
we're going to go ahead and put our gas turbine controller. Oh, I need a fluid input valve. If we right-click this, it's going to say it's incomplete. It needs at least one turbine. Um, where is... Insane voltage, forge energy emitter. That's actually what I need. I think. I don't know. No, no, it's working. I do, however, need a way to get fluid into this thing. So I need a fluid intake valve, which I completely forgot about. Tesla generator, gas intake valve, fluid intake valve, I think. I'm pretty sure that's what I need. We'll put the fluid intake valve right there. We're going to connect that with a pressurized fluid conduit. We'll put the fuel air mixer and the gas mix compressor right there. Now we just need to lay down our turbines. And this is completely freeform. You can do this any way you want, as long as it's set up somehow. And this is now going to produce me 5,000 RF a tick, as soon as I give it some fuel. This thing is now getting fuel. It is producing 5,000 RF a tick. It's using 5.3 millibuckets a tick. And if we take a look here, well, I'm actually burning more biodiesel than I'm producing. That's interesting. So I might need to put a second refinery in. Oh, I drained all of my RF. Let's set this to none for the moment so that this has a chance to recover some power. We need to get the refinery running again. That's our problem. This thing wasn't producing. There. Now we're building an excess of biodiesel again. So, this is producing 5,000 RF a tick. This is already producing more power than that diesel generator did, but I can actually go through and add more turbines. So I can scale this thing. I can also add batteries to it to increase the internal storage. And this is the part that I really liked about the turbine. If we take a look at the storage components, the basic power capacitor takes four capacitors. Okay? Yeah, that kind of sucks. The advanced capacitor takes one energy crystal. Or four double layers. Well, obviously, which one am I going to go with? I'm going to go with that. Because that's cheap. That increases the internal capacity 5, 000, or 5 million RF. The high density capacitor is 25 million. It's the same as a vibrant capacitor bank. And it just takes a Lapertron. So these are stupid easy to make. I'm probably going to make a bunch of those and add them to the multi-block just to have extra power storage. But, we come up here, we take a look at this. This thing is taking in 4,380 RF a tick. And that is, with these machines, running full bore. This is slowly catching up, it looks like. 19, 25, 24, 23. Well, maybe. It looks like it's producing just about enough to keep this thing running. But this is building up a large internal storage very quickly. So, we can add a few more turbines, I think. Let's try adding two more turbines. Let's upgrade this to 6,000 RF a tick. So, we'll need 16 more of these 
to get two more of these. Still wearing my hazmat gear. So, we'll need six of you. We're going to need some more dense iron. Let's go ahead and make some more of you. Run you through there. There, we'll upgrade that a little bit. There's enough for one. That'll be enough for two. Vibrant Turbine requires RTG. Two more Vibrant Turbines. Let's run down here. We'll just tack these into the existing multi-block. Again, you can put them anywhere. The multi-block will reconfigure itself. Now it produces 6,000 RF attack. And it's using 6.4 millibuckets tech. We're still building diesel. All right. That seems like it's going to be pretty good to start. So, another thing that I could do is I could set this. Well, I don't really have a way to set it easily. I could change this to output redstone when it's full and then use a redstone conduit to carry it down here and put a redstone control right here so that this thing shuts off if it's full. I might do that but right now I burn enough power that I'm not that worried about it. Like right now I can come and I can turn this back to input. We'll start taking in power. It's going to drain a shit ton of power to start. Because it's refilling the internal buffer on this thing. But now, we're taking in 1,200 RF tick. Well, what did I say used about 1,000 RF tick? This thing. This thing is stupid. That's going to allow me to build up a ton of ender pearls, and I'm actually producing a little more power than I'm using. This is with my miner working on coal ore in the other world. Why am I working on coal ore? Well, because ran out of diamonds and emeralds, and I wanted more. So, side effect. This helps too. 88,000 coal. Alright, now. Let's put some of this stuff away. We're going to do one more thing this episode. I want to make an age jump. To do that, we need to go Neotech. Neotech has a bunch of electric machines that run on RF. The electric crucible is the one we're interested in. Requires silver, a bucket, machine frame, stabilized ender pearls, and mica. Stabilized ender pearls are end diamonds with ender pearls. There's a reason why I'm producing end diamonds and ender pearls. 
Because each one of these things is going to take one of these stabilized ender pearls. Let's go ahead and get ourselves. Oh, I don't have any end diamonds? I have the electric diamonds, I just never turned them into end diamonds. You know I had some in here. I'm also going to need some mica. And I need my calculator. Get my flawless calculator back out. We can put some of this stuff away. Uh, I'm not using anything nuclear at the moment, so we can put that away. Let's let's put this away right. This is so stupid. Okay. So, flawless calculation. Well, not flawless calculation. We're doing atomic calculation here. Endstone, electric diamond, and obsidian. Gives me end diamonds. End diamonds can be used for a few things. But mostly it's used for draconic cores and stabilized enderpearls. So, the stabilized enderpearls is what we're going to do. Sixteen of them. We now need machine frames, which I've already made a couple. Some silver and a bucket. The electric crucible triggers age nine. Let's come in here and add that to my collection. Actually, no. You, you. We can just put you down here. Put the trophy there. Get a piece of clear glass. There we go. New trophy added. I think it's backwards. I can't tell. Nope, we're good. All right. One other thing that I would like to do this episode. I want to make the thermal binder, which is really easy. We got that. We're also going to need that electric crucible that I just made. We're going to go plug this into a power line. Uh, hmm. Where do I want to plug this in? I guess we can just do it on the end here for now. Enhanced energy conduit should give me enough throughput. Put the electric crucible down. Put the thermal binder down. The thermal binder allows you to put tools in and bind upgrades to them. It requires molten tin from this electric crucible. Well, I'm going to need to make a few of these processors. So we're going to make two single core processors. Actually, I'm going to make nine of these total. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Those upgrade to dual core, except for the one, which upgrades to quad core if I have dandelion yellow, which I don't at the moment. There we go. Quad core. These processors increase the operating speed of the machines that they're in. Octa-core is the highest processing speed you can get. We're also going to need some DDR memory. This increases the number of operations that can be performed at once. If I remember right, I need eight of those, too.
Because that's going to get me. Uh, yeah. Four DDR2s. That's going to get me two DDR3s, which is going to get me a DDR4. Then, this last one, we're going to change into a network card. In the Electric Crucible, we're going to put in our octa-core processor, our DDR4 memory, and our network card. The network card adds a new GUI. We're going to set this to push. We're going to give it some tin. We'll just give it a stack. And it's going to melt. And it should... Hmm. Why are you not doing anything? You're going too fast? Or do you not have... Hmm. Maybe it's because this needs a network card. I realize this episode is running a little long, but I really want to get this done on camera because I want to... I want to start processing something. There, is that going to work? Oh, you're using 5000 RF a tick, that's why. Let's take that out. Now you're using 300 RF a tick. You are working, you're just not working very fast. There we go. It was this that was making the problem. So we're now building up Molten Tin. I'm going to make an electric sword. Or an electric pick. Electric pickaxe requires an, an RF battery, steel. Now, my understanding is that the higher batteries don't really do anything. So, well, I guess we could find out. The Elite RF battery takes the advanced. The advanced. Okay, that's actually pretty easy. It's not too much of a waste of materials if it doesn't work well. There we go. An Elite RF battery which I'm going to use to make an electric pickaxe. That, yeah, see, it only holds 25,000 flux, even though I used an elite battery in the construction. That's what I was worried about. Now, what's so good about this pickaxe? It's upgradable. That's what these Neotech upgrades are for. Specifically, Uh, where is it? Fortune upgrade. Requires Empowered Palace. How much Empowered Palace do I have? Because it requires four blocks for each upgrade. How about I just use the crafting station? Since I'm right here. 17. Damn. Not quite enough. The reason why I'm saying that is because you can actually upgrade this to have Fortune 5. Which I definitely want. So. I am going to off camera make 5 of these Fortune upgrades. Which means I'm going to need to get some more Empowered Palace going. I'll do that off camera, and then I'll come back. We'll start the next episode. We'll get our pickaxe. We'll process our diamonds and our emeralds, and then we'll move on from there. So thank you guys for watching. This has been Night Dagger with episode 31 of Age of Engineering. If you liked the video, make sure you like the video, and I'll catch you later, peeps.